Stanford University. I'd like to use as a subject from which to speak this afternoon the other America. And I use this subject because there are literally two Americas. The kinds of things that he was most concerned about were economic. By the time he arrives at, at Stanford, he's already beginning to think about how to move beyond civil rights to these economic issues. He really gave them a lecture about the problem of poverty. That, to me, is, is much more the real king. The Martin Luther King Jr. Research and Education Institute was established about 10 years ago at Stanford in order to carry on the work of the King Papers Project. In 1985, Mrs. Coretta Scott King asked me to edit and publish the papers of her late husband. Our job is, is really to go all over the world uh, trying to find uh, documentary materials relating to the life of Martin Luther King. We've identified several hundred thousand documents. Out of those, we've published um, a few thousand uh, that represent what we think are the most historically significant ones. I think of these documents as windows into the life of Martin Luther King. One of the documents that I think had a great impact on me was a paper that he wrote for a class at Crozier Theological Seminary back in 1950. And in that paper, it was called An Autobiography of Religious Development. He described why he made the decision to become a minister. You can see, even as a young adult, he already has his mission. Thirty years ago, when Mrs. King asked me to edit Martin's papers, these were available only to a handful of scholars. Now I can make materials available instantaneously to anyone with an internet connection anywhere in the world. Starting in 65, King really went back to his roots. He says that what's happening in the United States is, is a relatively small part of a world phenomenon. There are three great evils in the world, and one of them is racial oppression. But the other is poverty and war and violence. And we have to deal with these three evils. So I think that his message is, if anything, more relevant today than back in 1965. We will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.